Okay, a bit more of an opinionated one this week. Um, there was a quote put up on Twitter last week from Arsene Wenger saying, between the ages of five and 12, it's better to have no coach at all than a bad one. It was loads of replies, um, a lot of opinions, a lot of people agreeing with it. Some using it to criticise academies, a lot saying that they should be staying in grassroots football rather than academies, etc. Some people come back and said, actually, this quote is about developing coaches rather than the players themselves. And then some people using it to, to kind of criticise coaches for putting their ego in the way of things. So the reason this stood out to me is when I deliver coach education, I always say the best session plans are the ones where the coach doesn't need to say anything at all. And my reasoning there is if you can create engaging practices that look like the game and have got the challenge level set right for the players within that, they should learn just from playing it. The coach obviously then adds value to that by, by their actions throughout the session. So I'm not devaluing the coach, but actually let's get the session plan right. And then a lot of it should take care of itself. So that's why all, that's why this quote stood out to me. Ultimately, the question is, do I agree with this quote? Well, yeah, I do. Um, that might surprise some people or upset some people. But I agree with this quote in terms of you're better off without with no coach if your coach is a bad coach. I do think that we should have coaching at these younger age groups as long as it's the right type of coaching. So kind of I have to really give my opinion then on what is a bad coach. There's only actually two things that I class as, as a bad coach. And the first one is someone that is refuses to learn or is not open to learning because ultimately if it doesn't matter if you've been coaching two weeks, two years or 20 years, you can't be classed as a bad coach if you're still learning. So bad coach kind of says, that's it. You're, you're done. That's where you are. But if we're still learning, we're still developing, we're still on our own journeys. So coaches that are still open to learning can't be labeled as bad coaches for me. And the next part of it is actually co a bad coach. And this is the last part is someone that, negatively affects kids kids and negatively affects their love for the game and their enjoyment of the game you see this in loads of different ways like not letting kids have equal playing time not giving positive messages across criticizing kids that are still learning like that for me creates negative environments where players instead of falling in love with the game are actually having a negative reaction towards the game because of the environment that they're in so that's what makes a bad coach for me. Um, you might agree or disagree with that. That's absolutely fine. Um, but then kind of going to the tweets, one of the first things that people use this for was to kind of criticise academies and saying players shouldn't be um, in academies. They should, should, should just be playing with their friends all the time anyway. Um, kind of implying that grassroots is, is the place that they should play, which is where you still need these coaches. So... My, I get a bit irritated by this argument, to be honest. The reason I get irritated by it is because people paint grassroots as this amazing, rosy place uh, when they put these tweets out, whereas the reality, it's not like that. There's loads of amazing coaches, amazing clubs, brilliant environments at grassroots level. Um, and for me, the, the majority are good environments, but also there's some really poor environments. I've seen coaches screaming at kids and referees. I've seen parents screaming at kids and referees. When I say kids, I mean six, seven, eight-year-olds. They're getting hammered and they're getting shouted at and they're getting criticised by full-grown adults all the time. I've lost count of how many kids I've seen crying at grassroots football games or sat on the side of the pitch just waiting to play and not getting to play. And when they do get playing, they get criticised. So let's just not paint it as this is an amazing place all the time because it's not. Same with academies. Academies aren't amazing places all the time because... It adds pressure to kids. But is that a bit of how we are as coaches or as parents that adds the pressure? Because for me, academies, we should be saying to kids, this is a great place to learn. It's in great environment to develop. Go enjoy it. Have fun. We'll see what happens. It shouldn't be in a kid's mind. This is my chance to make it because that's where the pressure and the negativity comes into it. Just to, without sounding biased towards academies, I do think they go in academies too early. I personally wouldn't have them in there till secondary school. Um, but I do think they should be allowed access to good coaching at younger ages. But ultimately, it's OK to not enjoy academy football as well. And that's where if kids don't enjoy it and they don't like it, that's absolutely fine. They should be allowed to just go. This isn't for me. I, I want to step out of it. So I think it's a better environment to learn in the majority of my experiences. but 
neither are perfect. So that's that's just why that argument irritates me a little bit. Um, talking about coaches' egos, that's one of the big things that came up in the Twitter comments. Uh, this is something that, yeah, the coaches' egos do get in the way of, of player development. And does that make a bad coach? You've got to look at it for actually what we're trying to change with coaches' egos. The biggest one is, coach, you'll get to the cup final and the coach who's done equal playing time all year might go, right, I'm going to play these two less because we've got a chance of winning the cup final. That's the coach's ego getting in the way. It's not anything to do with the players. The players all want to play. So and my argument for always for that is if you're the coach and you get to the cup final with your team and then your director of football or your chairman of your club comes over and goes, I'm more qualified than you, so I'll take this game. You step to the side. I'll take this game because so I'm more qualified and I'm better because we have a better chance of winning it because it's a big game. How would you feel as a coach? Because that's the kids that get told you're not going to play much today because it's an important game because that's how they feel. So coaches' egos and that can get in the way of players' development and love. So that's not something that we should be seeing, especially between 5 and 12. So it's it's kind of kind of looking back at that tweet and going, do I agree with it? Yeah, I do. Because at those ages, some of these things that happen can create real long-term negative experiences for kids. But I do think that if you get the right coach, the right environment, you can really accelerate their learning and their love for the game, especially at these early ages where it's really, really important. So that's my point of view on if, if I think we should have coaches at this age. I still think Wenger's quote is not about players. I think Wenger's quote is about coach education, improving coaches and then if we get that bit right, the development of players will take care of itself. So let's not always quite want, um, comment on what we should be coaching kids, how they should be learning, what they, what they should be doing all the time. Let's talk about how do we create good coaches that create great environments for young players to develop a love for the game, a love of the ball, and then develop their own ability as they go on. 